ever wanted to know the absolute surefire way to find a sucker and remove it, keep watching this video because I'm going to tell you the 100% success rate way to always get the sucker. The way I'm running my tomatoes. Welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to be talking about pruning our tomatoes. And I'm going to show you how to prune them from their baby stage all the way up to adult plants like this that are producing fruit. So the next step before planting, we need to prep these transplants. What we want to do is take off about half of the vegetation on the plant. And I want to leave three to four layers on the vine here. The way I'm running my tomatoes, is a central leader, single leader. I'm gonna take it down to three initial layers here. So one, two, three, and then here's even the fourth layer. Sometimes when you pinch it, it'll tear the skin and make a rip, which makes the plant have to heal that wound area and it's wasting energy on that. It's also a site where an infection could get in, um, damaging the plant, maybe even losing it. So just trying to, you know, Keep the plant as healthy as possible from the beginning here. Snipping them is a little bit safer. All right, and then I'm just leaving one, two, and three tiers. The fourth tier is here, but I'm gonna leave it. My tomatoes are, if they were taller, I could get a little more aggressive with this. But I wanna make sure that when I'm looking at the plant, it's got at least three main fan leaves here. These are the sun collecting leaves. They're gonna help produce more photosynthesis, create more roots, get the plant bigger. So I'm pruning the Amish paste right now, and I need to prune these up so that it looks something more like this. And you can see on this one, I've taken off about half of the leaves and the suckers. The reason I'm doing this is to promote more root growth. And when I bury this in the ground, I'm gonna bury it up to this node right here. And if you can see these hairs, these are places where roots will most likely pop out of, and they'll pop out of these nodes as well. And it'll just create a lot more root structure for the plant, giving it more access to water and nutrients, um, you know, a more vigorous root structure. The better the, the plant will be, the stronger it will be. So that's what we're kind of trying to encourage here. I'm also looking for any suckers. If there's any larger suckers, I'm going to take those out right now as well. A sucker is a competing vine that tries to come off of the central leader and it will actually flower and produce fruit as well. You know, there's so many different techniques and ways that people grow tomatoes. So I'm just showing the way that I do it. And obviously you know, I'm still learning, still trying to dial in my methods. And I'm trying different techniques here and there to see what works best. And I've found that this, this idea of trying to create more root structure in the beginning is, is a, a really beneficial thing to do. So I just want to show you guys something really fun that kind of proves and just shows how amazing nature is and just kind of my whole philosophy that nature is always right and that you know these natural patterns are designed and they're here for us to use so check this out guys so this is called the fibonacci spiral so check this out so here's my lower branch my lowest branch is right here take that off spin it to the left the next branch that i come across is a little bit higher i keep spinning the next branch i come across is a little bit higher I keep spinning it, the next branch I come across is a little bit higher, and so on. And that is an example of a spiral pattern. It's layering itself, going higher and higher as it goes around the spiral. And can you think of any other pattern that is like a helical spiral pattern? Well, DNA is like that. That's the main one I think of. Um, and trees also mimic this same pattern, the same pack if, if packing efficiency. And basically just all it does is allows for the most balanced amount of light to hit all around the entire circumference. Anyways, this is a cool observation of a natural pattern and how amazing that is. So I'm gonna prep all my tomatoes so that they're ready to go later this afternoon when I plant them. I wanna plant them once the weather is a lot cooler. It's about 83 degrees today and full sun. So I wouldn't want to plant these midday. They'd get wilted. It would just uh, stunt them and give them a lot more stress. Some of the tomatoes might not even make it. So it's best to plant either early morning or late afternoon. First tomatoes we're going to check out are these chocolate cherries. 
and every tomato variety is a little different. They all grow slightly differently. These guys are pretty cool because they have double flower fruit sets. So when you see the fruit set, it'll, it'll split and go into two, which is pretty cool. Let's check out another tomato. So this is the Amish paste, and most tomatoes will just put off one flower set off of the main stem like that. So down here where you can see the fruit developed, it's coming off one fruiting cluster. So anyways, the chocolate cherries are very productive, very delicious. I definitely would recommend trying to grow them. So when you're pruning tomatoes and cucumbers, and even um, fruit trees, I really recommend starting to prune and analyze the plant from the bottom up. Um, and that's just going to help you to give the plant the best shape and ensure that you're finding all the suckers or anything you need to remove. Since these plants are already really established, it's the end of June and I put these in at the beginning of May, I believe. So they're super established. I've been harvesting fruit off them now. Um, so most of the suckers have already been removed because we've done a really good job. Occasionally, another sucker will pop up in a crotch. Um, but so you can just do a quick check of the places you've already gone to and move your way up. So first thing I'll check for, just to show you guys, is suckers. But I'll, I'll prune off uh, sun leaves and suckers. I'll do it all at the same time. But I'll show you guys in steps. And then we'll put it all together at the end in a final process. So first, what are suckers? And you know, let's find some. One thing to keep in mind, we are pruning these tomatoes to a single liter. This is the technique that I'm using. Some people let their suckers go wild. Some people train to single liter. Some people do double liter, which is pretty cool. Uh, but for myself, I'm doing single liter. And single liter means that, that you're keeping the main stem being the main fruiting part of the plant for its entire life. The single liter has the, the best connection down to the root structure. If you start letting the suckers go off, now you're, now you're splitting the energy of that plant up and a sucker can produce fruit. It is gonna take off a lot of energy from the root structure and it's gonna start putting it into another secondary growth. Now, if you're doing a two-tiered structure, then you want that, but since we're doing single liter, it's gonna be a waste of our energy. Uh, we won't get as much fruit production if we let it a random sucker go and don't train it. We really wanna remove all of those. So you can think of the sucker the reason we call it sucker is because it's tricking you into believing that it is the main growth stem, but it's not. Okay, so, you've, so as you saw on the young plants, I showed off the sunleaf, right? A sunleaf, they have leaves that look like this, there's no flowers on them, and they come off the side of the main stem. So if we come up the plant here, here's a flower section, fruiting section, and if we follow the main stem, the next fruiting section, there it is, it comes off the main stem, boom, next flower section is here, comes off the main stem, keep going up, another fruiting section, comes off the main stem. So right now, we know these are sun leaves, this is what a fruiting cluster looks like, okay? So the next thing, we need to look in the crotch. The crotch, 90% of the time, the sucker is going to be in a crotch. Okay, the crotch is just where the main stem and the sun leaf meet and creates usually a 90 degree angle, somewhere around that. And in the middle, the sucker will grow out. So I've pulled all these off. As we go up the plant, now looks like we've got some stuff going on here. So on this variety, it likes to put off sun leaves and the actual sucker off of the crotch. Some varieties will do that and you should be able to identify the difference between a sucker and a sun leaf by the shape. I'm showing you guys a little bit more advanced stuff. If you really want to understand suckers and what they look like and what they are, and to get them 100% of the time, even when they're not in the ideal crotch location, then you got to understand uh, the leaf identification. So see how these are much more broad and wide? That's a sun leaf. This one here, the leaves are more narrow, some more smaller leaves curled up on the inside, and that is the sucker. And what's going to actually happen with this is this grows bigger and stretches. This will become a sun leaf. This little piece will become the leader of the sucker, and this thing will stretch up and will produce fruit just like this one will. So if you could imagine it, 
this little sucker is gonna stretch up just like this guy and eventually it'll shoot off flowers like this. But we know this is a sucker, it's growing in the crotch. A rule that you always wanna keep in play when you are removing suckers. So say you identify one, you think that's a sucker. Okay, well, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure, but don't pull it off yet. Look up, double check that that is for sure the sucker and there is for sure the next leader. Okay, that's gonna really prevent you from making a big mistake. So as we can see, there is another leader up here. And I just wanna show you guys that a lot of tomato plants will develop a little bit strange. It does not hold a consistent pattern. So don't hold a consistent pattern in your mind. You need to know each individual leaf and that's what's gonna tell you what's the sucker or not. So as we know, I've pointed out that these are suckers, right? So we're gonna pull these extra sun leaves off too. I just, I don't like them growing in there. It just reduces airflow. And they don't really help photosynthesis very much anyways. So now we know this is the leader, right? So let's keep moving up. And here's the fruiting cluster. So here's my big secret on how to determine whether or not this is a leader or not. So if you're looking up the central stem here, you see flower structure coming off the main stem. Now a sucker, will always be so far behind the central leader, it won't have this flowering structure coming off the main stem yet. But if we were to let this sucker that I had here, let it grow, eventually that little stem I showed will stretch up out, out to here, and it's gonna shoot off a flower cluster, just like this one. But when we're trying to identify, we wanna go up and see that next flower structure. That proves to me this is the main leader. So let's keep going. This variety shoots off a sun leaf off the crotch of the flower cluster. This is not a sucker. And I know that because it's got broad leaves and the broad leaves keep going down. They don't have that little vertically shooting frilly leaf that is normally right there for the sucker. So I don't really like these leaves that much. I'm just removing them. Okay, let's keep going up. Okay, now this plant's getting weird, right? So it looks like we've got two crotches and then the actual main leader is coming out of the center of that crotch. So what can become confusing, you, you're thinking crotch, the sucker's always in the crotch. Well, that's not the best rule to go by because that's not always true. Sometimes the actual leader is in the crotch and that is where it causes people problems sometimes. So that's why I'm gonna show you guys a couple more examples of this. So here we go. So let's identify our main leader, right? So we've got sun leaves coming off the sides here. Here we've got leaves here coming out of a crotch on each side and then a central stem coming up. Now let's think about my flower thing I just mentioned. The main leader will always have the flower structure coming off of a stem and that has that doesn't that? Okay if it's the case that this is the leader then I should be able to find the, ne the central leader right here and this is it. This right here is the leader. This is what's gonna stretch up and become the next growth of the plant. This will become the next sun leaf. So let's remove these suckers. There, and there's one more. Right there. Just be very, very gentle at the top of the plant. You can snap it. Okay, so now we've ensured we've removed all the suckers Here's the next central leader. It's gonna continue on. Now, the next step, I would train this to the line, but I'm gonna show you guys that in a separate video. Okay, we're gonna prune another one, but let's just take a quick look at the way these plants work. So, about every foot or so, you will have fruiting cluster, sun leaf, sun leaf, fruiting cluster. So it's, you know, there's a pattern that it actually creates. Fruiting cluster, a couple sun leaves, and then another fruiting cluster, and it just, it's in these sections. So it, the plant is created in these big chunks. So that's another way that you can uh, think about the plant. Okay guys, here's our next tomato, and I'm just gonna zoom up to the top for our example. Okay, so let's analyze the plant. So all the way down, we don't have suckers. I'm just coming up here to show you the couple sucker places. So let's come up when we're looking at this, um, this leaf, what's this leaf? It's got broad leaves, there's no flowers, it's a sun leaf. Let's go up to the next leaf branch. This one as well, right? That's a sun leaf. 
what's the next highest branch? Okay, well, this one's in the crotch. It, you see how it's not perfectly in the crotch? So that will happen a lot. So just know that suckers don't always grow perfectly in the crotch. They can kind of come slightly up as well. So let's make sure this is a sucker, right? Let's take a look at it. Well, it's got a sun leaf, a sun leaf, and then what's this thing? Got something more special coming off of the center here. This whole branch here is a sucker, but this can become another leader. This can become a part of the plant that produces fruit. Okay, so we don't want that. Now, let's use my technique of double checking, right? So let's go up the plant. We've got a fruiting cluster, and isn't that our 100% our indicator? We've got a fruiting cluster coming off of the main stem that's higher than the sucker. Okay, so this has to be the leader. Let's keep going though, let's double check. Keep going up, sun leaf, there's a sun leaf, sun leaf, and here we go. Here's the leader, sun leaf, sun leaf, and we even have more evidence because there's another fruiting cluster right here. All we really needed to identify the leader was this main fruiting cluster coming off of the main stem. Okay, you can see the sucker has not even started to develop its flowers yet. It's about to in the next day or so. This, this sucker will start putting off some flowers, but it doesn't matter because when you go back up the plant and you see this main cluster coming off the main stem, you know that's the leader. For example, if you let this sucker grow for another week or so, it, it is going to shoot off flowers just like this main stem. But the way you'll know it's the sucker is because this fruit has already probably started developing or it's much further along. This will just have its flowers first developing, plus it's also in a crotch, and that's the guarantee that it is a sucker. Okay guys, so if you've got bigger suckers, it's good to clip them just to prevent any stripping. Sometimes the skin of the tomato will tear, so you want to prevent that. So cutting that off, always throw away all your cuttings from cucumbers, squash, and tomatoes, and throw them away or compost them if you're composting them at high heat and that's gonna prevent any disease um, spreading because tomato, cucumber, and squash leaves can carry a lot of disease and spread them easily. Okay, so now this guy's done. There's nothing else to really remove. You know, when I get to the top here, this is a sucker coming out of that crotch. A lot of times I'll even leave that little one just in case, just to be sure. Sometimes the, the, the top leader you know, occasionally you'll get a random disease or you'll get a grasshopper or something will come in here and chew that off and break it and kill it. Which means the only way this plant's gonna have new growth is out of a sucker. So sometimes leaving the small sucker like this, even though I could remove it, is a good idea because um, sometimes something goes wrong with the plant and it's good to have a little bit of a backup. So you can keep that in mind as well. Okay, so here we have a rare situation, but it does happen on uh, tomato plants occasionally and that's where you'll get a sucker and the leader looking almost identical and that's because it's not growing directly out of the crotch and that's what's so confusing about it so let's take a look at this and i'll show you the single determining factor that will always tell you if you're dealing with the leader or not okay so here we have the main stem and then it's branching off into two individual stems Okay, obviously both of these are growth points. Either of these could produce fruit, they both have flowers. They're both about the same point along in their development. But what is the one difference between these two? That is that this one has a flower set coming off of the main stem. And only a leader will have a flower set coming off of the main stem in the beginning stages of its growth. You'll notice that the, the sucker here it does not have any flowers coming off of a main stem. It only has flowers coming off of its next leader. The next growth point for this sucker is right here. And that's gonna, if I let it grow, it'll continue to grow up. And eventually, this flower set right here will actually, it's when it stretches out, it will be on the, on the stem, just as this one is. But in the beginning stages, only the true leader, the one that has direct connection to the roots in the ground, will have the flower set coming off of the main stem. So that's how you can always, always know. Okay, here's the third and final example I'll show you. And this is a great one because this is a really developed sucker that we missed. 
um, that's going really long and it proves my method of finding the true central leader. So I'll try to show you guys, it's hard to film this, but let's just go up the plant together here. So we're coming up, coming up, coming up. What do you guys see right there? There it is. So this is a sun leaf coming down. This is the central leader. Something's in the crotch. It is a sucker. So as we come up, you'll notice there's no flower cluster coming off of the stem at all. Here's another sucker coming off of the sucker in the crotch there. There's another sucker here coming out of the crotch. Another sucker coming off the sucker. And then it finally has its fruiting cluster up here. So let's double check. Is this the leader? Could it be? Well, let's go back down. And let's come up the plant. We're coming up, we're coming up, we're coming up. Hey, look at this. It's a gigantic fruiting cluster. So obviously this is the leader. So I just want to show you guys that even though we missed this sucker and it's crazy developed, there's no flower cluster coming off the main stem yet, still. So my little method of looking for the flower crust cluster coming off of the main stem, this is the 100% way to always know, okay? Now, you know, obviously looking in the crotch is great. That's a great way to look. It's a great thing to do, okay? So let's, so this one's a big one, right? So I'll just clip it. And then if you guys can see this sun leaf it was connected to, it's looking a little unhealthy and gross. I'm just gonna remove that. So the next part that we're gonna move to is um, pruning them, removing dead leaves or leaves that are just not functioning anymore or not photosynthesizing well, they're not getting enough sun. And we're gonna do that to increase sunlight and increase airflow amongst the tomatoes. So let's just check that out next. Because we're doing lower and lean here with a single liter, um, we're pruning pretty aggressively. Curtis Stone calls it hard pruning. What, that, what they mean when they say hard pruning is just you're removing all of the leaves as the plant's moving up and growing. So as you can see here, it's all bare stem. We've got two fruiting clusters. And then as we move up the plant, we've got more leaves and we may want to remove more of them. Um, so things I'm considering here, um, airflow and light and how much shade it's casting. So the sun is gonna come from this direction and come over top like this running east to west. What is it gonna shade out as that happens? Is it, are some of these leaves not even gonna receive much sun, like possibly this one, because it's being shaded out by the leaves on top of it. If it's not receiving sun, it has more potential to, to get powdery mildew or a fungus. It's gonna reduce airflow. It also, is, I've got basil interplanted in here, maybe blocking some sunlight to the basil. Um, so these are the kind of things I'm considering. Usually every time we prune we're taking off a couple sun leaves. Now, if you're growing heirlooms and tomatoes that take longer to develop and that are larger, and you're not in a greenhouse with some shade cloth on it and it's exposed to open sun, you can get um, tomato sunburn with um, larger tomatoes. Having some leaves that kind of cover up and shade out the tomato can help it. Um, so I wouldn't hard prune a beefsteak uh, tomato as hard as I would cherries because these ripen and you pull them much quicker. They don't get sunburn really. That was another reason actually for me going with full cherries since I do grow out in the sun and it's the hot Southern California sun. Last year when I did beef steaks and some other heirloom, large heirlooms, a lot of them did get sunburned. So that's why I shifted more towards this. But anyways, back to the pruning, that's going to be good enough for me. Now this plant here is going to provide a little bit of shade onto the fruit. Um, and then now more light's gonna be able to penetrate in here and get the basil and everything. Okay, this plant looks really good. There's nothing diseased on it. If there's some gross leaves, I would remove those. And we'll be harvesting this fruit here in another week or two. It'll be all be gone and we'll keep moving up the plant. And also pruning encourages growth uh, upwards. So as we trim the leaves down here, it's helping to stimulate growth at the top of the plant to put out and keep growing upward. Last example, I'm gonna to try to just take you through my all my steps, putting it all together from top to bottom here. So here's the bottom of the plant. We're gonna start moving up. As you can see, this plant is directly underneath the plant above it. So these leaves are getting shaded out 
and I can even see a little bit of mildew on these. Okay. So I'm even seeing a little bit of powdery mildew there. And the leaves closer to the ground are more susceptible to disease. And the other reason for pruning often is you're removing these leaves that are getting diseased really quickly, getting them out of there. The longer they sit on there, the more likely they can spread it to another plant or farther up this plant. So some of these plants, I leaned them a little bit too far. So the tomatoes are touching the ground. Um, but I'm gonna cover exactly how to lower and lean a lot better. I've removed all of these sun leaves I think I wanna remove. Okay, fruiting cluster, I don't see any suckers. Okay, it's a nice fruiting cluster. So far, so good. No suckers. Okay, we've got something here. What is that? Is it a sucker or a sunleaf? It is a sunleaf. Okay, you can see it's got broad leaves, horizontally spaced leaves, nothing going vertical. And it's connected to the fruiting cluster 